Welcome back to Buried Cinema. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about two documentaries that are nominated for the Oscars. Uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop. Even a little bit and more than that. Strepo. It's very strange. But we're going to go right into our opening review and turn to uh, Steve. Should put my name there for a second? <laughs> no, don't worry about it, George. <laughs> uh, so I, I was actually introduced to Banksy's art in, I think, 2003 by a friend of mine. And I, I thought it was awesome. And I've been following him ever since. I, he's brilliant. Um, and I think this is just another example of his brilliance. In that everything, it's everything he does undercut, not only undercuts some sort of social idea or social norm or something, but also undercuts the very thing it's doing. And, uh, the best example of that is his Simpsons opening sequence that he did, where he shows, you know, children producing toxic, toxic, uh, Simpsons, uh, CDs and yeah, DVDs and, and toys, toys and, and art. Yeah, yeah, merchandise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, I, I felt very, very conflicted about this because on the one hand, I think it's, I do, I do think it's brilliant. And it's really, there are places where it's really funny. Yeah. Um, you think talking about a, the documentary itself now? The documentary, yeah. Okay. yeah. Do, you, documentary. do you think it's a genuine documentary? <sighs> that's, that's what's so difficult. I mean, and mm-hmm. that's what's difficult. I mean, is Banksy's art genuine art? Or is it, you know, I mean, that's, and he even undercuts, himself he even undercuts that. Mm-hmm. So that's always the question with everything he does. Is it, what really is it? Which, yeah. of course, forces you to ask, well, what makes it art? What makes it a documentary? And I, I don't know. I mean, he didn't shoot any of it. Are you sure about that? Did well, he, I mean, there are parts I, of I it. I was but... wondering. Because he, this is it's directed this, by this, him. Yeah. Well, this starts out, uh, what's his name? The, the, the guy Terry, that we've done. Uh, Terry. Gura- yeah. Gurarta. I can't really pronounce his name. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pretend it's like ethnic so people won't like assume <laughs> that I'm saying it wrong. Oh, it's ethnic. He must be saying Who it right. Who becomes Mr. Brainwash. Mr. Brainwash. <laughs> yeah. It starts out with him documenting street artists, then meeting Banksy, and then it kind of turns... But e- even before it, it does this turn where uh, the, 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 the documentarian becomes the artist and the... The, the artist, artist becomes, documents him. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of shots where somebody's documenting him, documenting the street artists. Yeah. So there's somebody else behind the scenes. Um, and it's just, it's amazing to see actually servicemen, what they actually go through. Yeah. And to see every, everything short. I mean, they don't show you men dying. But the scene that really struck me was watching these men react to one of their sergeants who has just been shot and killed it immediately. Yeah. And yeah. the depth of the psychology in that scene was amazing because th- these men continue to do their job in the midst of utter grief. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's like nothing we've ever seen. Like, it just made me realize how far, far short war films actually mm-hmm. fall in actually depicting grief. Because mm-hmm. these men, it didn't, it didn't stop them dead. They would just grieve as they kept fighting. Like, mm-hmm. you, you, you could just see the person at the same time that he's crying and screaming he's asking questions about what they need to do next and it was it was haunting yeah this was, it was absolutely just an amazing amazing documentary i i wanted to talk about exit of the gift shop first because watching this made that seem so trivial really it just it was like watching restrepo and then thinking back on it, it's like it's a, it's just it's utter nonsense compared to this. I mean, I'm not saying that Exit to the Gift Shop wasn't an important movie, but in light of this movie, it's compared it's pointless. It feels it's a pointless. It, there's it feels like fluff. Yeah, if it, it's like really, who cares? When you're watching these guys go through this and experience what they're experiencing, I mean, there were several times in this movie I just lost it, completely lost, like bawling. Mm. I'm going to come off as the heartless man in this podcast because <laughs> uh, I I very much appreciated Restrepo and I think it's an important film and one that people should watch. I don't think it's a very well-made film. Hmm. 
I don't, you I don't, are I, heartless. I don't. No, well, no, no. What, what, what do you think? Is I don't think. I don't. I, 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 I think. I think the narrative structure was terrible. Um, it, in some ways, it's a pure documentary in that it's just showing what happens. It shows what happens. Yeah. But even a doc, even a documentary, needs to have some kind of a narrative structure, mm-hmm. and this one was not put together very well. And my other problem with it is that, and this is going to sound really heartless, but I didn't feel emotionally invested. I mean, like I, I was emotionally invested in the general sense, like the same way I would, I, the same way I'm emotionally invested when I read about, when you read about mm-hmm. the yeah. fighting, yeah, fighting, mm-hmm. see it on the news, that kind of thing. And yeah, it, it, it hurts on some level that this is going on, but I, I wasn't specifically invested. Like I didn't know who these guys were. I felt like then it needed more of a setup. Like I needed, to, I needed to spend some time with these guys prior to being in, you know, on this outpost. I needed mm-hmm. to, to I, before I got there, I needed to know who these guys were. I need, I didn't know, I, I had no idea who Restrepo was, or why he was such a great guy, or why these men responded in such a strong way to him, and why mm-hmm. they were named. All right, uh, this week, instead of doing our flick chart segment, we're going to be taking some time and looking at the Oscar nominees this year, um, kind of giving our predictions of who's going to win. Uh, we actually have a lot riding on this this year because we've made a bet that uh, whoever we assign points to all the categories and whoever has the least amount of points, basically whoever gets the least amount of predictions right, uh, is going to have to go and see the Justin Bieber movie in 3D. In, in 3D. In 3D, in 3D. By mm-hmm. himself, and then come and give his review of it on the podcast, um, which I guess will be the two weeks after. Probably yeah, two weeks after. So not next right. week, the following. Right. Um, so uh, we'll get right into it. Alvin's part of this bet as well. He's not here this mm-hmm. week because he's. Um, Hunting sharks off the coast of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yes, good for um, him. Yeah, he is a yeah, he's a traveler. They're, they're becoming man. a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those sharks. <laughs> All right, uh, so we'll get into it. Uh, uh, best motion picture. Now there's ten nominees, and they are 127 Hours, Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are All Right, The King's Speech, The Social Network, Toy Story Three, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Who do you think is going to win, Stephen? Um, I'm actually go- going for Black Swan on this one. Mm. Uh, I know it's, well, it's toss up between a few of them, but I, it's easily the best, one of the best movies of the year. And, um, it I think seems, it's the best. Yeah. it seems like the kind of, the kind of movie that, that they'll go for. So, really? mm. yeah, it's, it's not my pick, but it's, well, what do you want to win? I want True Grit to win. Hmm. Actually, no. I take that back. Toy Story 3. I want Toy Story 3 to yeah, win. Yeah, I want Toy Story 3 That would be win. amazing. Amazing <laughs> upset. Yeah. <laughs> Toy Story 3 won. Mm-hmm. But would totally deserve it. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Yeah. I, I, Black Swan, for me, is my personal mm-hmm. num- number one of the year. But I, I think it's, it's a little too dark and a little bit too much for the Oscars. Hmm. Um, and I just think they tend to pick movies that they love dramas, first off, and they love biopics. So it's really tough. I think it's going to be a tough battle between Social Network and King's Speech. And I think it comes down to Social Network because it's more the movie of now and they like films that are somewhat more innovative, right? Historical yeah. biopics about a king have been made before. Yeah, the King's Speech yeah. is amazing, but it's very... It's run, not run of the mill, but by the, it's, by, the, by the numbers. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not, but it, it, it's... Straightforward. It's yeah. straightforward. It, it fits into a clear genre. Social very Network... Classical. Yeah, classical. That that's a good Maybe. way. Of... Whereas the social network it has a very almost I almost want to say revolutionary style of yeah, yeah of, of film it's film. much more of our generation kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's it's an amazing amazing film. It definitely deserves best picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really something else. That's what I think. The we'll social network. I'm going the social network. I went back and forth in this a little bit um, because Golden Globes went social network and mm-hmm. the Baptists went King Speech. But then the Baptists are a bunch of Brits. Yeah. And it's a British film. Um, and sometimes the Academy is just like a stick it to the Baptists. I don't like know. But I, I, yeah. I mean, like personally, I, I, I want to see Toy Story 3 when I think it would be awesome. But 
I'm kind of leaning towards social networking. That's what I'm thinking yeah. is going to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Alvin's also going with uh, social network. Yeah. Okay. So it's just me. So you're Black Swan. Is I'm Dark Black Horse. Swan, yeah. I'm the Dark Horse. I'm the Black Swan.